Hello everyone, nice to have you tuned in. Yes, it has been quiet for a few days. That's because I ordered a ton of materials, dismantled the old milling machine, and thought about what to do next. As is well known, I am currently without a milling machine, and that is just not acceptable. I know that a few of you write comments like, then paint your OSB walls white. No, people, they will not be painted white, they will stay as they are. I like the OSP. I like it. My office, when someone was here, is completely like this. So the ceiling, walls, everything, except for the floor, of course, I don't think it's a bad surface. Nevertheless, I couldn't just sit here and say I'm going to act like I'm on YouTube and Instagram and nothing comes of it. As if I thought about what you have wanted to do for a long time and have never completed, and we are facing it, I am taking care of the machining center. I actually have everything ready now except for two things, which I will get to shortly. It only leaves the fact that starting tomorrow, I have to take care of the quarterly closing. I'll finish that up. I hope it will take two or three evenings, then the topic will be settled and we can move forward at full speed. Where do we currently stand? As you can see here, I'm definitely taking the GoPro with me so I can show it to you. No, I will take you upright. So, here you can see where we stand. The servo motor for the X axis is installed. The cross axis is finished. I'm just waiting for the milling table. The tower is also finished. I have now used steel cables here to secure the counterweight, and I am now turning behind it. These are basically two guides that I have made and steel plates. I will get to that shortly. Yes. The deflection itself. The steel cables are just a temporary solution. This is because I want to use chains here. And on the other side, the sound cabinet is ready. Yes, I know it's made of wood, but that's just how it is now. Well, what I still have to do is, now one would have to look past the dirt on the floor, the drag chain. However, I made a small faux pas. It is a bit too short. I now need to order a few links from Egus, and then I can extend it. Well, I made the counterweight out of steel, simply because it has more weight in less mass than aluminum. Interestingly, I knew or was aware that when I have steel laser cut, the area where it has been cut becomes warmer and thus harder. That's why, where I knew I had to make M10 threads for those threaded pins, the M10 threaded rods you just saw, I decided to leave it only as a grain, because I need to drill and such. But somehow, I don't know, something got into me to make these four holes where basically these individual plates will be pushed on. I just had the bright idea to say, well, let's have it laser cut at that point. And because I'm such a cool guy, we'll have it milled with a slight undercut so I can ream it out. Should I tell you something? When the metal discolors, it becomes incredibly hard. I was sweating bullets. I don't have a proper drill press here. That wasn't fun, guys and girls, I can tell you that. Well, but it's done, it's there, and it works so far. As mentioned, what is missing is the Z-axis. Since I am without milling, I was looking for someone. At that time, a Constantine contacted me. Along with a few others, a Constantine contacted me about the 4.5 kilobyte spindle from Rotham. It was about the fact that the shout didn't work properly. They gave us a few tips on how he solved it. He also uses the spindle and is actually satisfied with it, and so on. I asked a few people around, and with Constantine, I said, Hey, Constantine, how does it look? Would you be interested in milling the parts for me? And Constantine was all fired up about it. I said, Sure, I'll do it for you. I'm really excited. Constantine and I went off to chat a bit. We had a phone call and said, I have something. I'm currently working on something. I'm working on a product. I'm currently focused on the CE certification. I don't want to say much about it right now. If Constantine is nearby, I think he would show it. Then we'll make a short video out of it. Exactly. The Z-axis is coming. Constantine should, if everything goes well, finish it while I'm doing my quarterly closing. I think that's great because then it will be perfectly timed. What I will also get is the actual breakfast itself. Thanks to Marcus for that. Who takes care of the dream of milling, my manufacturer. I will gladly link it for you below. 
I will also get a 30 millimeter face mill from him, an indexable insert cutter for BT30. I'm really looking forward to it, as it should really perform well. I also ordered a few new milling cutters, but I don't have them here right now. I tried some from Goring. I have to say, I am surprised about the price. I thought they would be more expensive, but they are not at all. I took an 8 tooth 2 flute cutter from those. A 12 tooth 2 flute cutter. And one with a relatively short cutting edge. I might try my hand at the star challenge, I'm not sure yet. And I have organized a cadence man, a 16 tooth 2 prong, just to see what is also possible. Because now we come to the components. Look here, the spindle I'm using. Sharp end. It looks like this. It's rattan again. And I'm putting it down now before it keeps falling down. It is a Ratham 7.5 kilobar of spindle. Why did I choose it? I wanted performance. It should be affordable. And the Ratham is. I have BT30 tool holders in abundance like sand by the sea. It was actually obvious. Additionally, I have agreed on the price with Ratham. Due to the topic regarding the BT30, I will link you below to the eBay listing where I bought it. Let's take a look. I'm really curious about this. Just as a little treat, this here is the brake resistor. And those who can convert brake resistors of about 2.2 kilowatt are not even half as large. So that's already Hoshi. Those are 75 ohms and 780 watts. Also quite funny, that is for this 7.5 kilowatt monster. The network filter from Schaffner, yes. The price is higher than for a 2.2 kilowatt Chinese spindle. The inverter itself is not exactly cheap. You may have already seen it in the short video. Here is the inverter, also a Hoshi. Let's see how I can fit everything in over there. What I have also done are a few printed parts. Now I actually have to take you along again. Let's do it in landscape format. If we look over here, I made myself a printed part. The idea is that I will route the cable around here, still need to leave a gap, then go over here, can secure it with cable ties, can secure it here with cable ties, and then essentially make the bend upwards to supply the spindle and everything. And also the minimum quantity lubrication in my case will be two cold ends, as always. I have the same thing attached below for the drag chain. This means I can just go over there and have the cable there. It was the easiest way for me, so I would like to implement it that way. Yes, there isn't much more to say about it. This time, or for the first time in a long while, I am using proper switches as reference switches. I think those are from RS. Yes, nothing major, just a small change. Essentially, this is a holder. It gets set up. The cross table comes in, triggers, and that's the end of the topic. The nice thing is that since I have profiles at the bottom, in this case it would be a copy, I can simply slide it in and adjust it a little. I made two more holes at the top where I can then create a thread in the aluminum plate and that will be rock solid. The parts are printed solidly and I don't think I will replace them. The whole thing three times. For the others it looks a bit different. What else have I printed? We will also find that on my page. This is not a new development. Someone has probably already drawn it. I just drew it that way. If you might have noticed in my videos, there are tool holders for the BT30 on the wall at the back, as the tool change did not go properly. And ultimately, these are always three blocks, but I also have them individually as two blocks. I can set the principle in there. It goes in a bit tight, but that's intentional. They go in here. You can secure them to the wall. They are fixed with three screws and I can position three tools side by side. Originally, I wanted to do the whole thing out here at the front. You can already see the frame for the enclosure here. I'll get to that in a moment. I actually wanted to do it outside, but I have three boys, one of whom is two years old. If I position them here so that he can reach it, you know what I mean. That's why they will probably end up inside. What I have also designed, but I will show you when I install it, are holders for GU10 lamps. I will illuminate the milling machine from the front with GU10 spotlights for the videos. And the great light sheep tube up there, I need to see what I will do exactly. That, that, that I have. Yes, I have another housing here. I don't like the contacts on the spindles, so a normal housing with a button on it would be appropriate. And then the cables would be put in there just like that. Yes. The most important part. I will use JMC service for the drive, okay. But how do I control the whole thing? 
I bought a Mazda Carta over there. The project has been going on for quite some time, about a year and a half ago or so. It's already over there, hanging on the wall, on the DIN rail. It's been hanging there the whole time with a 5-volt power supply. I also have a computer ready with Linux CNC. And actually, I once had a setup. I enjoy this programming and setting up, and I don't know. But somehow the glorious idea came to me that, hey, it would actually be perfect since I'm not installing a WGMS system to organize a mass CNC. I have always been really into the Maso G3 Touch. Now I thought, well, I'll just write to Maso. Very clever people. I have a little project in mind. What do you think about it? And they got involved. I have initially paid for it myself, but regardless of that, I have now received a control system from them. I will get it provided to me if everything fits. And now, one might say, yes, Daniel, now you get this provided, and now you have to give positive reviews about this thing. No, people. I checked. I bought my first Maso 3 four years ago, and since then there have been three pieces, with this one being the fourth. And I wouldn't pass it on to my customers who bought my SEO milling machines if I weren't excited or convinced about the Maso 1010. And those who were at the Sorotech trade fair know that I am a real fanboy. It's easy to set up. You don't have to do much. It just works. I'm without a computer, and you can't even imagine what I've experienced during my SEO geo time with Mass considering I had a Windows XP computer, which was about two and a half years ago or so, with connection errors, and so on. The list is quite long. The milling machine has been idle for a month. You press the power button and then it starts. Yes, I have to deal with a blue screen first, do an update. That all falls away with the mass. Turn it on, then it takes about six to seven seconds. The box runs, homing, and off we go. Press the emergency stop beforehand, it wants that. I have everything, including the hand wheel. The G3 Touch needs a cable extension as it will be the control on the screen. The screen is included as well as the relay board and the control unit. Well, what personally annoys me a bit right now is that I want to do an unboxing. I don't have to, but I would just like to do it. I will show you how something like this is delivered and how it arrives. And I haven't gotten around to it yet, which means I can't take a look at it either. I've had it lying there for a few days and just can't find the time. Well, that's how it is. I can hold out for a few more days until the quarterly closing is finished. So, that would be it really. That's where we stand right now. Regarding the housing itself, there is already wood here, and more wood will be added at the front, but I first need the Sorotech milling machine, which I hope will arrive by the end of November, as that is the time frame we have targeted. I need to build a front here, whether it will be a sliding door or something else, I don't know, but that will also be OSB. And on the side, I have to look. As you can see, it might be relatively tight, and I need to somehow get through with a slim Adonis body. Maybe I'll take another look. The idea is to possibly add a panel that hangs down from the top. I need to see how I can solve that, because then I can also get past it. And if I come back again, there will be space. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you are as excited, even just a little, as I am, about how the whole piece will perform with the 7.5 kW mass and the servo drives, then subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. Otherwise, I can't say anything more, so thank you for watching and see you next time. Ciao.